Well, in a minute, I'll be talking to the novelist and political writer Grigory Chatashvili, better known by his pen name, Boris Akunin. But first, we're joined from Moscow by the Russian historian and former parliamentarian, Natalia Norichnitskaya. Can you tell us, the, the, the Russian foreign minister said today that Crimea, you have to understand what Crimea means to Russians. It means much more, for example, than the Falkland Islands do to Britain. What does Crimea mean to you as a Russian? Is the question addressed to yes. me, Natalia? Yes. Na Natalia, mm -hmm. yes. Well, first of all, I think all experts understand what is Crimea and Sevastopol to Russia, and it's a crucial element in our defense system. And Russia has proven through these uh, 20 years that it was satisfied with neutral status of Ukraine. It is the West who instrumentalized the crisis in Ukraine that started peacefully and was about to fade at the end of November, instrumentalized to break totally the whole political situation uh, and to uh, have this tabula rasa where uh, the Ukraine can move uh, into Atlantic orbits. That was clear to everybody and to us too. And uh, that is why uh, it is the West who pushed Russia to the corner and now Russia has shown the red line. You know, but like Hitler, who was, uh, didn't satisfy himself with Munich and Anschluss of Austria, uh, sponsored by the West, and declared the, the gold frontiers uh, of Greater Germany uh, on Volga. But hasn't, the response hasn't of Putin, Russian people were clear. Has, hasn't Putin yes. made some mistakes for the Russian state, in that you have ensured that the rest of Ukraine will now be anti-Russian? You have now placed Europe and America in opposition to Russia. You are probably going to suffer some sort of sanctions regime. And even if there isn't a, a Cold War as such, East-West relations will be put back years. That's got to be a strategic error. Well, uh, Russia was watching uh, uh, with alarm what was going in Ukraine through all these 20 years. We saw how its history has been rewritten in uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, textbooks, etc. How the uh, radical zoolo zoological uh, nationalism and racism was growing in Western Ukraine and nothing happened. Nobody even um, tried to uh, tell uh, the Ukrainian authorities um, that is not European values at all. Okay. And um, it was not it was it was not Russia who drove uh, Ukraine to this line because any uh, responsible expert knew that trying to draw the whole of Ukraine with Crimea and eastern Ukraine into Atlantic orbits is a clear road and okay. path to splitting Ukraine. Let, let me it turn to my other guest, Natalia. Thank you, thank you very much indeed for that. Um, what, what do you make of this analysis of, you know, comparisons to, to Hitler? All historical parallels, as they say, well, they're not right, they are lame. And what I am thinking now of is that my country, Russia, is living through the worst period in its entire post-Soviet history. We are now at a very dangerous crossroads because this evident attempt of Vladimir Putin to annex Crimea, it stirs up the darkest instincts of the nation. Uh, so where do you think it's, it's, it will lead Russia? I think that we are now crossing the line from lose corrupt plutocracy, authoritarian regime, to full-fledged police state. Because Vladimir Putin is using this nationalist, imperialist hysteria to strangle the opposition, to close... In, in Russia itself? In Russia, in Russia. Russia is the country which is going to suffer most from all this debacle. And doesn't Crimea mean anything to you as a Russian? In oh, the way yes, it, it does. does oh, yes, it does. And I'm not against the referendum in Crimea. But it should have been a real referendum, which means without foreign troops on its soil, not in a rush, giving enough time for people, for both sides to present their positions. And of course, with the representation of international observers 
given that, it would have been a, a referendum which would have been, well, admitted by everyone, I believe. Grigory Chasasvili, I want to call you Boris again. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed <laughs> for you. joining us today.